<laughs> Good morning. Good morning. It's Shiv. It's Beth and I again. My name's Shiv. In case you forgot, <laughs> we're going to Dixon Lake today. So Dixon Lake is one of the reservoirs where we get water for Abbotsford and Mission. We're gonna give you guys a special inside look at uh, Dixon Lake and also the Norrish Creek water treatment plant. So strap in, it's gonna be an exciting ride. Here we go. Hey guys, welcome to Dixon Lake. So here is the lake and below here would be two different intakes. What we're standing on right now, this ground, is the dam. They can control the flow of Dixon Lake into the creek um, when they need to utilize it most in the summer. Norsh Creek is the main source, but as the Norsh Creek flow goes down in the summertime, they open up the valves to let Dixon Lake help refuel it and fill it up. So on this side of the dam is where you would see Dixon Creek would flow this way um, and eventually end up in Norrish Creek which would then get treated and distributed through Abbotsford Emission. Everything here is gravity fed. Um, so it'll feed in through the dam by gravity and then down to the treatment plants by gravity. Sometimes people think that, oh, well, we've been getting a lot of rain or it's been such a dry summer. The level at Dixon Lake is dependent on the winter and how much snow we get. So you could have a really dry summer, but if you had a winter with a lot of snowpack, we'll actually have quite a bit of water in Dixon Lake. On the other hand, you could even have like a really wet summer, but if there wasn't a good snowpack in the winter, then uh, Dixon Lake will actually have low water levels. And in that case, we would actually have to increase the stage of rest watering restrictions that mm -hmm. we're in. Norris Creek is our major source and which is fed by Dixon Lake. So this lake is the level at which they determine the restrictions on. The lower it gets, the more restrictions we have in the summertime, uh, mostly just for outdoor use, such as sprinklers, because over half of your water use is all outside. Um, so that's where the restrictions are. All right, we're at the Norris Creek intake, and uh, this is where water comes down from Dixon Creek, uh, and that's where the water goes down to the Norris Creek water treatment plant. So as you can see, that's where all the water is flowing in. It comes all the way down here, and the way it's been set up, the water flows over the silver weir, and you can't see it, but right where that white water is, below that, there's an intake. So the water basically goes down vertically into the intake. And then that intake, it carries the water down to the water treatment plant. And then the entire idea of this weir is any sediments or cobbles or pebbles, they just flow straight over down towards that way, out of the intake, so they won't go into the intake. All right, next stop on our tour, we're going to the Norris Creek uh, water treatment facility. See you guys there. Here we are at our 
slow sand filtration. We have four different pools. One, two, three, four. And then all it is, is you have a layer of sand and um, you also have a layer of like good bacteria. Uh, we call it schmutzdeck. <laughs> that good bacteria helps eat up the bad bacteria. So it's really fine sand and the, the holes between the sand are really, really small. So not a lot can go through the sand. So what happens is the water just goes down, down, down through the sand and the gravel and then any like particulates like bacteria uh, they'll get filtered out as well it's collected and goes back into our control valve building so when the water comes in there are two different ways that the raw water is treated so one was the slow sand filtration that we showed you and then the other one is the ultra filtration membranes all right here we are at the membrane facility oh look it's that. So these are the ultrafiltration membranes. There are lots of small, basically tubes that are all held together in clusters like this and then repeated over and over and over again in a really, really, really large block. They, um, they have microscopic pores that you can't see with your eye. So water will be pulled through the group of them. Water will go into the microscopic pores in, in a tube because it's basically just like a straw and it can go up or down, which will be collected in pipes and then everything that can't get pulled through those tiny holes, all the bacteria and all the things just like slow sand filtration, all the larger things, the protozoa, end up stuck on the outside. Um, and so the clean water is filtered through.